Hello students. Let's take another chapter today from Flamingo. The interview by Christopher Sylvester. A word about the author. Sylvester is a freelance journalist, author and consultant who writes for several UK newspapers and magazine publications. The interview is an excerpt taken from his Penguin Book of Interviews. Now, let's look at the theme. Before we proceed, you must understand that this chapter is divided into two parts. The first part is all about the reaction and views of celebrities towards an interview. And here, Christopher Sylvester has brought together the quotes of many famous personalities who consider interviews to be an intrusion on their personal lives. So you can understand that the first part showcases how the freedom of the press curtails an individual's privacy. Now the next part of the chapter, we have an interview of the famous writer and academician Umberto Eco. Here we get to know the various qualities of time management, this is important, which were used by Umberto Eco and these have always helped him to gather many accolades. He gives the details of the various aspects which contribute to a person's success. In the first part, we see that Sylvester has highlighted the fact that interviews have played a crucial role in journalism for 130 years. They have been widely read and n number of individuals have been interviewed. Still, there is a difference of opinion regarding their methods and merits. Interviews by some are seen as a source of truth and a skill or art. Famous authors have varying views on interviews. Interviewees, especially celebrities, see themselves as its victims. Some consider them unwanted intrusions into the lives of celebrities, potentially diminishing their status. Now let us look at some of the disadvantages and here I've tried to cover the quotes of various uh, famous personalities. Keep this in mind because this is important. Uh, V.S. Naipaul, for example, believed interviews could be harmful, leading to a loss of privacy. Lewis Carroll found interviews to be horrific, especially when dealing with autograph seekers. Kipling also condemned interviews while his wife viewed them as immoral. H.G. Wells referred to interviews as ordeals and Bello likened them to stifling or killing someone. At the same time, Sylvester has also highlighted some of the advantages of interview. Interviews, they serve as a valuable communication tool. They are also best means of obtaining information about contemporaries. Interviewers hold unique power and influence. Now let's look at the second part of the chapter. This is an excerpt from the interview between Mukund Padmanabhan from the Hindu newspaper and Alberto Eco. Eco acquired a formidable reputation as a scholar for his ideas on semiotics, the idea of science, literary interpretation and medieval aesthetics before he turned to writing fiction. Now, the interview that is there in the chapter, it revolves around the success of his novel, The Name of the Rose. The interviewer, Mukun Padmanabhan, asks Eko how he managed to do so many different things at the same point of time. Umberto identifies himself as an academic scholar who attends academic conferences during the week and writes novels on Sundays. So children, it's clearly um, evident that Eco wants to be identified or he wants to be called uh, an academic scholar and not a novelist. He says 
that he manages to do so many things because he believes in a fundamental principle that there are empty spaces in one's life just like there are empty spaces in atoms and the universe he calls these empty spaces as interstices and he believes that most of his productive work is done during that time now his novel name of the rose has a detective aspect along with metaphysics theology and medieval history he also believes that the novel's success is a mystery because had it been written 10 years earlier or 10 years later he is not really sure whether it would have been such a huge success or not with this we come to the character sketch of umberto eco as you can see i've highlighted few traits in this uh, answer which you must incorporate when you are writing the character sketch of umberto eco to start with it says that he was a dedicated individual who wishes to bring slight changes in the world by his scholarly works and novels next it states that he is extremely punctual and values his time in fact that is why he emphasizes on working in interstices and as you can see he also used an example from his life where he said that if he was waiting for someone in the lift or uh, he was waiting for someone in that time also he would utilize it to write an article he comes across as a very humble and down to earth person because he wants to be recognized as an academician or scholar who writes novels on sundays and not as a novelist he is also very polite as he answered all the questions with utmost sincerity and honesty the conversation reveals that he was interested in the interview and was giving intriguing answers he was not avoiding any question that was put across by mukund unlike many other celebrities his opinions about journalism and interviews were different another important character in the second part of our chapter is mukund pandavan he is known as a dedicated journalist and the kind of research and homework he has done before the interview clearly showcases that he was very committed towards his work padmanabhan was into good journalism since he did not make the interviewee uncomfortable at any moment throughout the interview and stuck to only relevant intellectual and good questions so if umberto eco was cooperating then there was a big hand of mukund also in that his questions were focused on bringing something good out of umberto and extracting the best of his knowledge and opinions now let's look at some of the questions as per the cbsc format the first one is a reference to context question is from the first part of the chapter sol bello who has consented to be interviewed on several occasions nevertheless once described interviews was being like thumbprints on his whim pipe yet despite the drawbacks of the interview it is sup a supremely serviceable medium of communication it's that part of the chapter now the first question is complete the following appropriately sol bellows comparison of interviews to thumbprints on his windpipe implies you can think i'll just show the answer implies discomfort or a sense of intrusion next what is complex and multifaceted about the dual nature of the interview process because it includes the coexistence of discomfort and essentially suggests that while interviews might be uncomfortable for some individual it means that interviews remain a crucial and indispensable means of communication allowing for the transmission of meaningful information and insights so this has two points you can uh, write any one next select the option 
that does not correspond with the view that an interview is a supremely serviceable medium of communication. Don't miss the does not which is given over there in capital letters children. So the answer would be a tool for training. Next question. How do interviews play a vital role in helping shape public perceptions? So by offering a direct and unfiltered connection between the interviewee and the audience. Fifth question, complete the following appropriately. The phrase everything of moment refers to. So you can use any one events, ideas or information that hold significance or importance, crucial and noteworthy aspects of life, substantial and impactful content. List one possible reason for the unprecedented power of interviewer. Role as facilitators, interviewers guide conversations, extracting valuable insights or it also highlights audience representatives. Interviewers represent the audience asking questions that resonate with public inquisitiveness. So you can write any one. As you should remember, these are all one markers children. So don't waste too much time on these questions. Just write precise, direct answers in clear English. Now, this is a short answer question from CBSC sample question paper. Umberto Eco, with reference to the name of the rose, says, I think if I had written the name of the rose 10 years earlier or 10 years later, it wouldn't have been the same. What could he have meant? So Umberto Eco suggests that the success of his book, The Name of the Rose, was largely due to the timing. He believes that if he had written the book 10 years earlier or later, it wouldn't have been the same. So this could be interpreted as Eco recognizing the importance of cultural context and how the reception of a work of art is influenced by its historical, social and political climate of the time. And it also means Eco might be suggesting that the themes and ideas he explored in his novel resonated particularly strongly with the readers in the cultural moment in which it was published. So these are important points. I know it appears to be very lengthy because the answer has to be written in only 40 to 50 words. So use the points judiciously. Let's look at another short answer which has to be written in 40 to 50 words. What is the moral of the chapter? The interview. The chapter tells us that an interview can make a lasting impression. Moreover, as per an old saying, when we make perceptions about a particular person, the original identity of their soul is taken away. We learn how the most popular celebrities have criticized interviews. Uh, another one, 40 to 50 words. Why did the American publisher think that the novel, The Name of the Rose, won't sell well in America? The novel Name of the Rose dealt with a period of medieval history. Also, he felt that it would not get a good response in America because Americans knew nothing about cathedrals or had never studied Latin. People were ignorant about the medieval part. Therefore, he felt that The Name of the Rose would not be a success. Now we take up a long answer question. Uh, look at the question. It is a little different. So you know the story, but basically now uh, the examiner wants you to share whatever Christopher Sylvester felt in the form of a blog. So let's look at the format of a blog. It goes like this. Dear readers, interviewing a distinguished writer like Eco was both exhilarating and daunting. Now, uh, he clearly says, before our conversation, I grappled with self-doubt and weight of doing justice to his brilliance. We've seen that he's done uh, a lot of homework, but he is admitting that he was also very nervous. Now, he talks about how Sylvester's collection reassured me, showcasing interviews that navigated similar complexities and then reflecting on the interview afterward I found nuances I might have overlooked without Sylvester's anthology. So basically he it is writing in the first person all that he feels about Christopher Sylvester 
so and what he feels after getting the book the penguin book of interviews so it's just the format and the style that you use when you are writing the five marker can you see there's a very short introductory paragraph there's a very short conclusive paragraph and the main content is in the middle uh, in the second paragraph good luck thank you children like and share if you think it is helpful all the best